Tom, push the button. Push the right button. Damn A, right? Did you plug it in? What's wrong with it then? I don't know, Margo. I quit. We're done. I'm over it. Hey y'all, what's up? It's Kellen with KNT Do Halloween. Welcome back to another makeover video. This week we will be working on Ellie Hatchet and turning her into our axe wielding werewolf wild woman. So let's go. To start off, I'm working with a new product. This is Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two part product that you mix together and it becomes hard just like plastic, but you can sculpt it and smooth it out for about a three hour working time. I'm just mixing the two parts together and then waiting five minutes for the chemical reaction to start to kick in and then I'm going to start sculpting some claws with it. This is the first time I've ever used this product and there was definitely a bit of a learning curve. It doesn't really get legs for you know about an hour and by that I mean it doesn't start to stiffen up. So I kept having to go back and kind of adjust and tweak the nails but since it was my first time working with the product. I'm kind of happy that I had more time to work with it because it helped me understand it better. You can also smooth the product out with water, which is really nice and convenient because I was trying to match the plastic of the animatronic. I didn't want to use foam, although I've used clay foam before, just wasn't interested. So here's what they look like before I started painting. Now I'm going to mix up another batch of epoxy sculpt and start to work on the features of her face. They recommend that you mix it for about two minutes and then sit for five minutes so it becomes more malleable so you can sculpt with it. I'm also moving her wig up out of the way so I don't get anything on it and wiping her face down with alcohol to make sure that the epoxy sculpt gets good adhesion to the face. I'm now going in and just blocking in my features. I'm not a trained sculptor, just kind of going by eye and I had a few reference photos of some werewolves that I liked. I always like to start with the eye sockets. I think for me that just helps it make sense. And now you can see I'm going in and starting to add some much more pronounced brow bones, smoothing out the edges as I go with water. Now I got really into sculpting and using this product, so my camera cuts out, but I did grab a picture of what the finished product looked like before I started to go back in and sand. I'm just going in with a fine grit sandpaper to smooth out the edges and then wiping it down with alcohol to make sure I have a clean surface. I also am sanding off the seams on the hatchet. They were pretty pronounced and you'll see them later if you don't sand them now. Before I spray paint, I'm going to go through and protect the arms of her costume. I do want to reuse her collar and her sleeves because the costume that I have doesn't cover them and I thought the yellow worked well. I'm now going in with my favorite. As you know, I love starting with a black base on all of my props. It just helps tie everything together and I don't have to go back in and paint the shadows. Before I paint the handle, I'm going to go ahead and hit the head of the hatchet with some hammered nickel spray paint. Now I'm just going in and starting to dry brush the hatchet. It had a really great wood texture sculpture in there and I'm just enhancing it building up texture as I usually do. I'm using three different types of brown paint and kind of layering them on and then finally using a really light highlight, very lightly dry brushing at the end to just make it pop. Now I'm working on the head of the hatchet. I know it's gonna look weird right now, but what I'm doing is I'm building up some under texture and want it to look very natural. So I'm starting with, you know, bases of grays and blacks for dings and damage. Then I'm airbrushing red and then sponging red on top of it because I want this to look like a used fireman's axe, something that's been heavily used and worn. And to do that, the best way is to just build up the layers visually. And I'm also working off of a reference photo that I really like. Now I'm taping off the edge, the blade part of the hatchet. This is a great trick that I use with an airbrush, but if you tape off a hard edge and then use a bright metallic paint, 
it looks more natural because you will see that hard edge where the blade starts and it kind of tricks the eye into thinking that there is depth there that really isn't. I'm dry brushing some silver to show some signs of damage as well as going around all the edges with a black paint and then rubbing it off just to help add depth. Now I'm going to be taping off the handle so I can start airbrushing the skin tone. Using a flesh tone paint, I'm just working my way around, building up the skin texture until I like the depth. I'm just more comfortable using airbrushing, but it's really your preference. You can do it with a brush as well. I'm also adding some cream color to the claws, and then I'm gonna go back in and detail the cuticles on the claws with some black before I go back in over that detailing and just softly airbrush with black to help enhance those claws. Now I'm gonna go in and add the werewolf element. I want to use permablood around the cuticles as well as craft fur kind of jammed in there. A look I'm trying to reinforce is sort of the movie Trick or Treat where the werewolves ripped their skin off. I didn't wanna go that far, but this was my nod to that and having fur rip through her cuticles and rip through her hands and her arms, I thought it was kind of fun and pretty scary. Moving on to painting her face, I'm using the same flesh tone and just building up a base skin texture. I'm now going back through and starting to add some lips and her tongue, and I'll add some white to her teeth. And then I slept on it and came to my senses and realized she was looking like a vampire streetwalker. And I quickly started to yellow and kind of turn her teeth more canine and take her in more of a werewolf direction. I'm now going in and just adding some detail to the nose and some smudged eye makeup from an inspiration photo. Working with my favorite tool, the airbrush, I'm just going to go in and start building up layers of shading and shadow and highlight to help build up the depth of her face and enhance the features that I want to enhance and start making her look more like a werewolf. I'm building layers upon layers as I usually do and then going back in and adding some shading to the eyeballs as well as painting in the whites of the eyes and going in and starting to black out and detail the mouth. I'll be moving on to the eyes next. I always draw them in with a pencil first, then black them out. I'm gonna be using a dark marigold type paint as well as a brighter yellow paint to layer on top of it. I always like to let the eyeball layers dry in between except for the last and final layer. I always put that on wet on wet that way I can kind of blur the two colors together and I just find for me it helps make look a more realistic eyeball. Pretty sure painting eyeballs are my favorite. Next I'm going to move on to the mouth using a product called Wet from Fright Props. I'm going to paint the tongue, the inside of the mouth, her teeth, as well as add some drool. This product's really cool because it dries looking wet. Go figure. Now I'm going in again with another layer of the yellow. When doing the pupils, I like to use the back side of a paintbrush. It's already round and it makes dotting the pupils much easier. I'm now just adding some fur to her face and then I'll go back with some perma blood just around the edges just to make it look like it's ripping through her skin. And now onto the costume. I found a really great Red Riding Hood costume and didn't have to do many modifications to it came with four pieces, I think, and cost me about $20. To make the fur look like it was ripping through her arms and through her shirt, I basically just glued craft fur onto the styrofoam that was supporting her arms, and then cut slits in her sleeves and just plucked and pulled the hair through. I also cut some slits in the front of her dress, added a widow's peak to her forehead, and some hair to her wrists and knuckles. Moving on to the accessories, I'm just using a zombie head that I had. I'm modifying it by swapping out the eyeballs as well as adding permablood and this really neat wolf mask that we had found for about $4. I also got the basket for about 5 bucks, and I'm adding some blood to it to look as if it were blood soaked. 
For the Smash Pumpkin, I'm just using a Funkin from Michaels. I use my Dremel to cut out a bunch of chunks and my hot glue gun to kind of piece it all together. I'm now using a heat gun just to smooth out any of the rough edges and decided to use some great foam to add some texture to the inside. I'm now going around to paint. I wanted to paint the bottom of her jean skirt black so it helped blend it with the costume. I really didn't want to distress her costume too much because I wanted her to look like a trick-or-treater. It's kind of part of her story. For me, this is a very visual process. I often have to stand back and see where things are too bright or just look off. I'm using my airbrush to help add some shading to her nose and now moving on to quickly painting the pumpkin. I know this thing's gonna get thrashed by the ax throughout the season, so I didn't spend a ton of time on it, but I'm using yellow, black, orange, and brown spray paint. And the final piece, adding the permablood. I'm just going around and adding it to the edges of the rips and on her fur to help make it stand up and look more grimy, give it that skin ripped off, fresh werewolf kind of vibe. And then using my fingers and paintbrush to splatter blood wherever I see fit, especially on the head of the axe. And that completes our Ellie Hatchet makeover into Red Riding Hood Werewolf Terror. This one was so much fun and I had an absolute blast creating this character and making over this animatronic. Thank y'all so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button below. If you're interested in future makeovers and other Halloween related videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank y'all so much again for watching. Stay tuned for the demo footage and remember if you create it, they will come. What are you looking at? <laughs> what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Get.
back. Back. <laughs> what are you looking at? Get back. <laughs> what are you looking at? Thank y'all so much for checking out this makeover video on Ellie Hatchet. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed doing it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button again if you're interested in any of our future makeovers. And remember, if you create it, they will always come.